now that we've gone through a basic problem and advanced problem, we're going to try a really complex expected value problem. Um, this one is going to have a few different complexities in it. We're going to have to work around it. We're going to also have to look at the problem from a different perspective. So uh, this problem is already on the website. Just scroll down, you'll be able to see the problem where it is. But I'll point out a few of the major points that you need to know. First, you know that there are a thousand tickets. So that's a really big um, thing that you need to know. You also know that uh, they have a limited budget. They say that they need to have $300 as the budget. And on top of that, they also uh, say that you, they give you your payouts. They say that you have a $100 payout and a $1 payout. So these are the key pieces of information that you need in order to solve this. And what they ask you for is the, uh, the, um, the maximum number of $100 uh, coupons that you can have in this box of 1,000 tickets. Now they also tell you another key piece of information. They tell you that there's going to be 100 drawings. So customers are going to come into the store and they're going to draw 100 tickets total. They're going to give it to the first 100 customers. And they also say that when you pull a ticket from the box, they take that ticket and put it back into the box. So your probabilities never change per customer. Each customer has the same probability uh, for each drop. So now that we have all the key pieces of information, we can try and start figuring out how to solve this. So if you have a $300 budget, however, you're going to be giving 100 tickets, that means on average, you need to have $3 per ticket. So on average, you actually have already been given the expected value. But that's the first trick right there, is understanding that your expected value is not $300, but $3, because it's $3 per ticket. So our expected value formula, like we have up here, is just going to follow this format. So we're going to have $3 as the expected value is equal to. So in this case, rather than having these numbers already, we have to figure out this number. This time we're given this number, and we have to figure out one of these numbers. Now, we also know that the x values refer to the possible outcomes. Our two possible outcomes are the $100 and the $1 payouts. So let's go ahead and put the $100 here, and then I'll do a plus sign, and then we'll do the, uh, the $1 right there. So now we need to figure out what can we put in here to represent the probability of getting $100. So we don't know how many $100 tickets um, that can be put into the box. That's what we're trying to solve for. So what we can do is we can say x. x will represent the number of tickets, uh, the number of $100 tickets in the box. So we know that there's 1,000 tickets total, so the probability of getting a $100 ticket is x out of 1,000. x, $100 tickets out of 1,000 tickets. And now that we know this, we can also figure something out here. This is the next big trick. Realizing that if there are x, $100 tickets, then that means that the probability of getting the $1 tickets is 1,000 tickets minus x tickets out of 1,000 tickets. So if you subtract all the $100 tickets from the 1,000 tickets, the remainder has to be the $1 tickets. So this is, these two things here represent our probability. And now what we need to do is we need to solve for x. Now remember, we've defined x as being the number of $100 tickets. So don't get confused even though that there's an x over here. So once we find this, we get the answer to our question. So let's go ahead and go through the math. How do we solve this? First thing we want to do is go ahead and multiply these two things into the numerator. So we'll just leave this guy alone for now. And we get 100x over 1,000 plus... 1 into that gets us 1,000 x, or 1,000 minus x, sorry, over 1,000. And so we already see uh, common denominators here. So we can just bring these two fractions together. So 100x my, uh, plus all of this here. So 100x plus 1,000 minus x, all over 1,000. And again, we were able to do that because they have common denominators. So this minus this 
100x minus x is 99x. And we're still left with 1,000, so plus 1,000 on top. All divided by 1,000. So now the next step is going to be to multiply both sides by 1,000. So we'll take this side and this side and multiply it by 1,000. So 1,000 times 3 is 3,000. So we've eliminated the denominator from this side. Next step is to subtract 1,000 from both sides. So 3,000 minus 1,000 is 2,000 equal to 99x. And so now we simply divide both sides by 99. So 2,000 divided by 99 is 20.2 equals x. So just like in the advanced problem that Matt went over, and I, that Matt and I went over, um, you also need to be able to understand the interpretation of this answer. So remember, x is the number of $100 tickets that we can have. Well, you obviously can't have 0.2 of a ticket. So no matter what this number is, even if it's a 0 0.8, 0 0.9, even though it would normally round up, you have to always round down. Because remember, your budget is $300 total. If you go above this number, even if it's only by a few cents, you will go over your budget. So you need to stay under your budget. So no matter what the decimal is here, you always have to round down in this case. So the, uh, the interpretation of this answer, X represents the number of $100 tickets. That means you can have a maximum of 20 $100 tickets in this drawing. That must mean that there are 980 $1 tickets. So that is how we go through a little bit more of a complex problem. Again, the major tricks were identifying this expected value, identifying how to find this probability, and also going through the math and bringing them together, just the algebra. Those are really the only major tricks. I appreciate you guys coming to this, see this webinar, and I hope you're able to look at a few other things and that one.